talking with uh, Matt here. He was inside. Uh, he helped save some people, too. And Matt, again, tell us, you heard the shots. You saw the suspect. Describe it. Um, basically heard the shots. It was a tall, probably 6'2", six, 6'3", six, um, dark figure, all black, with his hood on. And he basically was unloading. And all I did was grab as many people as I could and pull them underneath the table. And then until I heard the shots, until I heard a break in the shots, and then we got people out of there as, as much as we could. It sounds like you smashed the window out. Yeah, we did. Describe that. Uh, bar stools go through windows. It works. I mean, I interviewed somebody who went through that window. You helped get them out, so you, you pulled a lot of people out, it sounds like. Um, that, that's all we could do. The only thing that I could have wished for is to have something uh, better than a bar stool. What did this guy look like? Um, tall, built, b bigger figure, maybe wearing a vest or something, uh, possibly. Um, all dark, blacked out. And what was he armed with, could you see? A uh, smaller caliber handgun with a, a light or a laser attachment on the bottom, and that's all I could see. Any idea how many shots were fired? Um, probably 10 to 15 in the first round, and then after that we got out the window, and it wasn't until we were probably halfway down the... Um, the parking lot till we heard shots again, and then another another break, and then lots of shots. And I think at that point it was police and him back and forth. And how long did that ordeal go on for? Um, we, by the time we got down people down to the street, that was probably a minute and a half, two minutes maybe. Um, and then we ran back in, and we were just pulling stragglers who were still in the parking lot, calling people, and we we're like, you need to get out of here right now. How many people did you get through that window? Uh, we probably pushed 30 or 35 people through that window. Wow. And um, were, was this person shooting at you guys while you were yeah, doing this? He was not shooting at us, not that I know of. No one around me was going down. Uh, he was focused more on that front area until he got done with that. It sounds like you knew pretty quickly what was going on. I, as soon as I looked up and as soon as I heard the shots, I knew exactly what was going on. And uh, I, was I mean, my there's confusion, there. it's crowded, there's music, but yeah. you, you figured it out pretty quickly. Why? Um, instinct, I guess. That's all that I could do. But it was just, I, I'm here to protect my my friends, my family, my fellow uh, humans. And I know where I'm going if I die, so I was not worried to, to sacrifice. So all I wanted to do was get as many people out of there as possible. We heard smoke bombs with what? I heard that also, but by the time we were out of there, he hadn't thrown anything and it hadn't, it hadn't gotten there yet. Sir, we can see that you're blood on your shirt. Not right? mine. Um, when we were going back to grab more people, someone was being pulled out with a, a, a chest wound, and the guys carrying him were tired, and so we took over and carried him to the paramedics. That's the only person um, that I sh actually came in contact with that had a, an, an injury from the, the attacker. So you saw one wounded person? One wounded person is what I personally saw, yeah. And did you say you worked there? Mm -mm. Were you just at the bar with friends? Yeah. Yeah. I'm here every week. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Click the ABC7 logo to subscribe to our Eyewitness News YouTube channel.